Greetings, one and all. This is season three, episode six of Poker TV Live. Now, when it comes to slavery, all we usually focus on are the st statistics, how many slaves, how many ships, how many of something. And we hardly ever ask ourselves the question, what must it have, what must it have felt like to be enslaved? Now, that is about to change all of it today after my long conversation with researcher Donata Filbert Nieveld. Strap in, here we go. Give me, me this. Give me, me this. Give me, me that. Give me, me that. Greetings again, one and all. I'm so happy to have you with me today. And the first lesson I learned today is the word statistics isn't one I should be using a lot today because there's a big trip up going on there. Statistics, I can say it. So yes, it is season three, episode six of Boca TV Live. I'm so happy that you're joining me. My special guest today is, a, she's a multi-talent, first of all. But what she's focusing on these days is her work as a researcher on um, the link between the church and slavery days. And in doing that, she has discovered that there is a whole area that we are not discussing when it comes to slavery, namely what the experience must have been like for the enslaved. What was it like to actually be somebody's property? That is what I will be diving into today with researcher Donate Filbert Nieveld, who uh, will be joining me from the island of Curaçao in just a moment. But um, in the meantime, let me ask you to just participate in this program. Leave a comment wherever you're watching, whether it's on Facebook or on LinkedIn or even on Twitter or on YouTube. Leave us comments so we know what it is that you are thinking. And while you're at it, why not subscribe to the YouTube channel of Poca TV or like the Poca TV Facebook page? It's all about cloud people. The more of you there with me, the merrier and the more viewers there will be and the more discussion there will be in the world. Not discussion, conversations. Let's call them conversations. So for those of you who don't know me, my proper name is Aldit Hunkar, but worldwide I go by the name of Poca which stands for People of Common Attitude. And this monthly program that I almost every month do on, and on the last Friday of the month, almost every month, because I skipped one last month. I'll explain it a bit. Um, I talk to the fabulous people I know all across the globe doing wonderful work that benefits you and benefits me. And um, that's just a way of showing that people of common attitude can actually make a big, big change and an impact in this world that we are living in, this world of turmoil, this world of strife, war, and hatred. Not all of us are the same. Some of us actually try to make this a better place. And I'm telling you, my guest today is definitely one of those people. For those of you who've been around for three seasons already, you know by now that I always, always livicate, not dedicate, I livicate these programs to my youngest sister, Aisha, who left this earth in the year 2011 and who was actually the only person ever telling me, just keep going with your polka TV and one day you will be talking live to a lot of interesting people all across the globe. As usual, she was right. This is exactly what I'm doing now. And she came up with this prediction way before it was even feasible to do anything live online. So here I am doing these programs every month. And I even have the Wednesday Ting with my good friend DJ Conscious, which is a weekly program on Wednesdays. 
But let's focus on Poker TV Live and the guests I have. And as I said today, a very special one. So in memoriam, Aisha Hunkar, my lovely sister, may she rule forever in paradise. So welcome to all the regular viewers. I know you're watching. Uh, it's good to have you here. And um, the people watching the reruns, yes, you're very welcome to do so as well. And even if you're not watching live, I still like to know what you think of these videos that I make on such a regular basis. So leave me a comment. Just drop me a little line. It doesn't have to be a big, big, big thing. Just, you know, just let me know you're enjoying them or you're hating them. Nah, don't tell me you're hating them. If you're hating them, leave the comment. If you're loving them, let me know. Um, I like to invite people to join in the conversation, not only uh, via the comments, but actually here in the studio with me. Now, to do that, you can just scan this uh, QR code here. It will take you to StreamYard, the hosts of my stream of my uh, live streams. And if you press um, the button, uh, you know the button that comes up on your screen when you scan this code, it will take you to the place where you can. Uh, allow your camera and your microphone to be used and you enter your name and you just press enter studio and you'll be in the orange room behind the scenes waiting for me to pull you up on the screen. That's with your small device. If you're using a laptop, which I much prefer, to be honest, please head over to this URL, bit.ly slash ptvl0306, Poca TV Live. 0306. It is case sensitive. Make sure that you use the capital letters. So hoping to see some of you here uh, in the orange room waiting for me to pull you up. That will be a blast. Um, make a note of this because I'm taking them down because it's high, high time to introduce my guest today. As we speak, she is uh, on the island of Curaçao, a former Dutch colony in the Caribbean right above Venezuela. That is where we find my guest today. Please welcome Donate Filbert Niefeld. How are you, my dear? Oh, doing excellent, doing excellent, enjoying to be part and actually very honored to be part of your fantastic show. So um, thank you so much for having me. Well, you know, the honor is all mine. And I must say, Donata, who I will be calling Donna a lot of the time. Yes. yes. Because that's how we met. Um, mm -hmm. the, the way you reacted when I when I invited you was heartwarming. You were you were quick, quick, quick in sending me all the information. <laughs> you sent me your entire life story, which made it very easy for me to prepare for this program in between my regular work. So thank you so much for your enthusiasm. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. And and I believe it's midday in Curaçao right now. Yes, yes, it is. So um, if people have lunch, they can tune in and uh, also be part of this. Exactly. Absolutely. And they should just join yes. us, whether it is just watching and commenting or in the studio, as I was telling you earlier. Correct. So, Donna, I usually start out with my guests, which is what I'm going to do today, with a short clip of what went on in the previous Poca TV Live. I was okay. planning on one at the end of September, but it fell through because my guest then had a last minute thing to do. So I skipped that program. I'm taking you back to the end of August when I spoke with a Dutch classical pianist. And this is one of the many, many things that she had to say. And music is, it's, it's in television programs. It's everywhere, it's on the street. And it connects people. And um, imagine a life a life without it. And I think I I th it would be so empty. And no, I, think, I couldn't. No, no, and I think many people that are not aware of that. I mean, they they hear music all day, but they are not aware of the importance of it. Ah. So, so this 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 soundtrack of our lives, if if it wasn't there, would we be different people? Do you think? Yes, definitely. Yeah, because. What, what, I think like even scientifically it has been proven that music has a huge impact on um anti to be and uh, to be not depressed for example right or to have um you can have less pain or you have uh 
better uh, feelings uh, connected to your emotions or like it's it's really a big part of who people are your your thoughts on what is. Lestari Scholtes had to say Donna well it definitely it definitely is music is music is vibration music is a connection with your soul, with your, your, your inner being, with your inner child. Um, and music definitely must have, must have accompanied our ancestors in their time, in the time of slavery, to be able to, to deal with what was happening with them. Wow. Now music is incredibly important. That, that, that's a wonderful uh, thing to say, because I know, for one, that you were a wonderful singer. We will be touching on that. And uh, I like the way that you, you link this to the four parents, because that is the main theme of what we will be talking about today. Absolutely. Our forefathers and foremothers mm -hmm. who were uh, taken to, you know, to the Caribbean, in, in our case, under the most grueling circumstances. Correct. So, yes, we, we will be talking about um, all of that, Donna, today. Mm -hmm. uh, let me uh, let me a quick quick look in the comment section because I'm seeing a lot of people here already. Uh, you do? I have, yes, I do. Mike Osthuizer is here. He's watching. Oh, that's my family. <laughs> Welcome, He's Mike. He's a cousin. He's a cousin, that's and he did great. so much to to pull in the family members. So, Mike, thanks a million. Thank Miguel. you, Mike. <laughs> yes, Miguru. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. And welcome to Foca TV yeah. Live. Who knows? Fantastic. You'll be commenting a lot more. Uh, I have another person here, Geraldine Archer. Oh, a phenomenal we friend, a phenomenal, how would I say, advocate of, of women and families here on the island. We've traveled to the United Nations um, in New York. A phenomenal woman. Yeah. Sounds like somebody I need to meet. How are you, Geraldine? Yes. My name is Aldit or Poka, and I'm sure this is not the last time your paths, uh, your path and mine will cross. Uh, we have DJ Conscious here, who's my one, my, my very best friend. He's in Jamaica at the moment. That's where Hi. he lives. But he's a Brit living in Jamaica, and he's eating a late breakfast. Bon appétit, DJ Conscious. I am sure that you'll be very interested in knowing what Donna has to tell us today. Uh, Mike is coming back saying thanks, Gudu, to you. Gudu meaning oh, sweetie, sweetie, sweetheart, sweetheart. in Tomo. <laughs> right, the, the the language of my country of birth, Suriname. Suriname, uh, yes. And Geraldine agrees that I can find her on Facebook and link up with her, which is exactly Definitely. what I will do. I will make sure that you get in contact with her. She has Ex so much to say. Oh, great. Okay, so that's for another project of mine in which I will definitely involve you, but I haven't told you about it yet, Donna. It oh, will happen okay. all, all, all in right. good time. So the way this always goes, I take you back to your early days and we move up to today and look forward to the future. So uh, you send me a bunch of really cute pictures of you as a very small <laughs> child. You were born in Aruba and one the, another island right right near to where you are now in Curacao. Tell me about those years in Aruba. What you know of them? Well, um, I don't know if the the viewers are aware, but um, in the time um, you had in Aruba the Lago Oil Company, an American oil company, and they needed workers. They needed workers, and just like you had in Curacao, Shell Oil that mm -hmm. needed workers. And so they recruited people through churches a, a lot of times um, to come to the island. And so my mom and dad were recruited to go to Aruba. My dad was working for the Lago Oil Company and my mom was working for a school, the Graaf von Sinsendorf School, um, in an area of Aruba close to the American colony. And so mama worked with uh, local children, but also from with children from the Americans who were living in the colony. And um, she really loved kids and she did her best, but, you know, nothing was happening. And when I was finally born, I mean, um, she, she did everything to prove that even though I was complete 
Lee bald. There was absolutely not one string of hair on my head. She would be, put a big bow, you know, to uh, let people know that that was her daughter. So, oh, so sweet. Yeah, that was a sweet time. That was a sweet time. I didn't. So, I lived there up to seven years old. Up to seven years, after which you moved. Your family moved to Suriname, my country. Correct. So why why did the family move? Well, my mom and dad were having some issues and my mom was always a very strong character. I mean, mm -hmm. she tried and she tried and when it didn't work out, she decided to just pick up her kids and move to Suriname. That's what she did. By and herself. She, by herself, by yeah. herself. And we flew to Suriname. She stayed there for a couple of months, worked as a, a, a substitute for a couple of months and then moved to Curacao because she always, she heard about Curacao and she wanted to continue living in this particular area. So she moved to Curacao and that's where I basically grew up. So hold on. So I know you were born in Aruba, but were your Correct. parents, your parents were not Aruban. Where they did were they from Suriname. From? They, they were, were from, from Suriname. Suriname. So they were recruited in Suriname. And, to go to Aruba. Um, to go to Aruba, correct. And the company paid for, you know, the trip and made sure they had a place to, to live. Right. And they preferred to have the people to be married at a time. So my mom and dad had a most interesting marriage, which is, mm -hmm. which is a marriage by handkerchief. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I, I believe it's when you're not uh, physically together. That you're that... not physically together. It was mm -hmm. something that the... The, the Dutch and the Americans invented so that my mom was in Suriname, my dad was in Aruba. At the same time, they went to the registrar's office. He had a female handkerchief. She had a male handkerchief. And then they married. And then when my mom flew to Aruba, she flew as a married woman. So um, that's, that's something that is, yeah, they used to do it in war times, I think. Yes. And they also did it in the period of um, the companies that were here in Curaçao and in Aruba. And so, so she I guess married it, I by guess handkerchief. It, right. I guess it was a smart way of getting people to move from one place to another and, and, and not Correct. be by themselves, I guess. Correct. Right. Correct. Interesting. So why did your mother want to go to Curaçao with you, though? She had heard a lot about it. Um, there was a lot of movement going on. So there were people who used to work in... Aruba then moved to Curacao to work at Shell and they would have correspondence explaining that it was a, a really cosmopolitan place. And that was the case in that time. Mm -hmm. Curacao was really kind of like a very cosmopolitan place. And my mom loved that kind of uh, ambiance. So she really wanted to come and she never left after that. She never so, left. So, she so do you enjoyed now feel it here. Good. Well, good for her. What a brave and courageous woman. Does that mean you now feel like a Curacaoan person? Or what, what, what is it you would call yourself in your heart? I'm a Caribbean South American cocktail. Yeah. I feel very comfortable in the whole of the Caribbean. Uh, uh, Aruba was my start. I experienced Curacao, but as I was as I was moving around in my career, I worked in all these different places in the Caribbean as well. Yeah. So I, I would call myself a cocktail. I, I, you know, a little bit of every place, and which makes it also easier to connect to people around I the can, world. I can totally relate to that because uh, I have a similar story. I was born in Suriname, and I, I did a lot of stuff all around the world. But at, at my, you know, as an adult, I started. Uh, finding out about the Caribbean. So I live part-time in Jamaica. I've know, I yes. know the Dutch islands. I know the British islands. I even know one French island. I know Cuba. Mm -hmm. So I call myself a Caribbean as well. Yes. So um, yes. a, quick, a quick note, because Else has joined us. Hi there, Else. Welcome to the show. Elsta Napel, that's a friend of oh, mine here okay. in the Netherlands. She's checking in. Thank you, Else, for joining us. Um, it is in Curaçao where we find the beginnings, the beginnings of what it is you do today. Because you told me that in Curaçao you were told or you got to know more about your four parents. And you sent me these two wonderful pictures of Albertina and Petronella. Correct. My Tell mom. Us, 
Yeah, tell us. My mom made it a point, you know, like right now we live in a fast um, environment where you buy your things already prepared. Mm -hmm. But you have to imagine, for example, if we would work on certain typical dishes, it took time to prepare. Yes. And then my mom would sit with us on the porch, my sister and I, Shala and I, and she would then, we would be busy um, working on uh, cleaning vegetables or whatever. And then she would go back in time and she would tell us about the life in Suriname. And my mom was a, was a vivid storyteller. So when she, she told those stories, I just saw it in front of me and it sparked an interest in history. It sparked an interest in knowing more about the people. Right. And um, yeah, my, my especially Petronella, the mother of Albertina. The, Albertina is the mother of my mom. Right. And Petronella was her mother. And if I listened at those stories of Petronella, I thought by myself, hmm, she was really a spunky woman. <laughs> the so, things she used to do. Let, let me do my quick math. That almost tells me that Petronella was born into slavery. Am I right? Right after. She was right born after. in 1870, 1875. So that's two years after the official yes. abolition of slavery yes. in Suriname. Yes, yes. Wow. Because it, we, as you're saying, you know, on the books, things look nice. Mm -hmm. But when the state puts pressure on you as a former enslaved person, Mm -hmm. to keep working for the same person and the same plantation, you're actually in bondage. You are. You know, and yes. um, so, yeah, the mother of Petunella, who was Wilhelmina, was born into slavery. And I I also found her in the different, um, what they call borderellen, which, yeah. which were the lists when... Um, the, we'll, we'll get into uh, that. We'll get into that. Okay. Because All right. Because, okay. um, let me check if that's true, yes, you and I met in May of this year, May of 2023, okay. when Excellent. I was uh, in Curacao with, uh, uh, with my director and my camera person and my sound man to make a series on the heritage, cultural and religious heritage that the Dutch left behind in their former colonies. That is Correct. when you and I spoke. For the first and time, uh, yeah. I, I did not ask anybody for any permission. I'm still going to use a tiny little clip of when you and I were together in that program called Firma Erfgoed. Let's have a look. Correct. And for people who don't understand Dutch, the orange letters that you see pop up in the middle of the screen, that is the translation of what you hear Donna say. Here we go. Who fooled the dot? Who? Overleven ze dat? Ja, dat, dat is waar ik naar zoek. En wat ik heel graag zou willen delen. Datgene wat je voorouders je toefluisteren op een of andere manier. Zo zie ik het, hè? Ik moest kijken in schieplijsten waar mijn voorouders als equipage stonden aangegeven. Je denkt aan een burgerlijke standlijst of zo. Want je bent mens. Nee. So, that is what you were about to tell us. You did not yes. find your people's names in any archives. You found them on the list of equipment. Tell us more. Mm -hmm. please. You know, it is extremely painful when you... Because after my mom spoke about the family... In the years that followed, I tried to do a family history. And I interviewed as best as I could on audio cassettes in those days and writing down and sending letters and getting answers to get an idea of the family. And a family member mentioned that we most definitely came from Ghana. And so I tried to find information about people coming from Ghana. When you do your research, you find out that your ancestors are not registered by name. They are registered by sex, 
male, female, child, um, boy, girl, elderly, but they are not mentioned because their original names have to be forgotten. They, they, they're the tribe where they were from, the area where they were from, from Africa, that was not important anymore because where they were going, they were not even sure if they would be together with their family. So mother, father, children were separated, sold to different owners mm -hmm. and their name that would connect them to the tribe or their, their, their clothing, their style of dress, the way, for example, you have certain markings that indicate a particular area where you come from. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a tribal um, connection, you know? Mm -hmm. And all of that they had to lose. So I found in those ship registers, not names of people, not, not where they came from, but amounts of them and written in the books, in the manifest, equipage. So equipment. What, what do you mean? Where are they? No. You saw the owners, their children, their wives. You saw their equipment horses, uh, whatever they needed to, to go to the country where they went to. And the rest was just in the same list where they had equipment, you had the human equipment. So we were commodities. We were things. And that meant that nobody cared if a mom had a child that she was still feeding. No, mm -hmm. if if the mother, if if the mother was sold, that doesn't mean that the baby was sold with her. So the baby and could go anywhere. The baby could go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Donna, when when you found your 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 family on that list of equipment, mm -hmm. how did that make you feel at that at that moment? I think everybody who experiences this, you, you, it has a, a profound impact on the pain and the anguish and uh, the sense of loss that these people must have felt. You know, um, when I'm in the archives and I'm going through the material, you see others going through material and they're working on it and they're working on it and, and they're happy that they're getting certain information. In my case, I'm happy that I'm getting certain information, but there's moments that I really need to stop for a while, step out, go drink a little water, go drink a little coffee or whatever, because there are so many emotions that come up. Like and what? at the same like time, pain, um, mm -hmm. anger, anger is definitely one of them, um, that I had to deal with and I'm still dealing with it. And I'm trying to put that in a different vibration because just like your previous guest mentioned music mm -hmm. and mentioned vibration, Anger, the, it, 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 when you have anger, you cannot function. Right. It, 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 it immobilizes you. It immobilizes you. Uh -huh. And so as I'm going through this process, because research is really a process that you're going through. Uh -huh. I am getting a little better. <laughs> at handling the different emotions that come up. I get that. Um, 
you know oh. when you see for example that you have you're talking about um one of the the plantations uh plantation newsorg that our family comes from oh. from mother's side and for example plantage doelen that um for example mike oshausen's huizen his family comes from um and you see for example that a, a, a tiny little kit of three or four instead of being just a, a playing child has to play a role in bringing water or picking up certain things and bring them from one person to the next um it didn't matter what your age was if you could work you were obliged to work because you were owned and everything of you your body your mind your everything was owned and directed by those who owned you yes you know yeah so yeah a lot of emotions come up and um you you are you are amazed that being this age that we are right now in the whole period that we got our education we never learned about this so no so as i'm going through the information i am i realize that there's so much that needs to be told yes of this this untold silent history. yes history Bar of barbarism people. Barbarism, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, DJ Conscious says uh, anger can easily turn into irrationality. Yes, we all agree that on too. that. Yes. That too. So Donna, one and would think, sorry, mm -hmm. um, one would think that uh, with all this happening uh, after you found out certain stuff, that's where your immediate attention would go in your mm -hmm. education. Yet you, you chose a whole different path. Uh, it took you, for example, to the Netherlands, Tell us yes. about this this period in your life and uh, what it is that you went to study. Yes, this picture was taken by a friend from Aruba who was also living and working at the time in Utrecht. And I went to Utrecht to study speech therapy. I became a speech and hearing um, professional. Why did you choose um, that? I loved, I loved communication. I loved... Um, I loved expression, but my mom was a kindergarten teacher and I used to assist her all the time with um, making material for her children in, in class and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I also um, experienced children, little children, having a lot of difficulty with articulation and everything. And through one of the... Um, informational sessions in the half of school at a time a speech therapist um explained what she was doing and everything and i thought oh my goodness that's a perfect combination so um i did the tests i passed through the tests and um went and did the and 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 enjoyed actually going through the process of of becoming a speech therapist It's interesting and, because mm -hmm. I, I have I have a friend in Jamaica, Kabu Maat Karu. She's a she's a brilliant journalist, okay. and what she also always says about this is, we were forced into languages that are not our own. They mm -hmm. even took our own language from us, and they took Correct. our tongue. and And she always says that our tongues aren't actually made for these European languages. Would you agree with that? Because there's a lot of people in the Caribbean who need, who need speech therapy. But I'm I'm asking you, maybe their tongue isn't even made for their language. Well, absolutely. I, mm. I experienced it. <laughs> I experienced that all the time. Look, um, for example, um, a kid, a baby, their tongue will do what they hear around them. Uh -huh. And so, um, if you only hear, for example, papiamento, or you only hear Spanish, or but if a kid has the opportunity to hear different languages, you would be surprised how easy it is for a kid like that to pick them up. Uh -huh. So, 
to a certain extent, I agree. If you hear a particular language and you only hear that, it must be very difficult for you to switch from a Caribbean language to a European language. Right. But if you hear different languages, you will pick it up. The thing is, are you allowed to speak it? Because that too was a point. eh? That was the point. They weren't even allowed to speak. You were not allowed to speak. You were not allowed to read. You were Mm. not allowed to learn. So because when you read and you can read the text, you, you will find out that certain things that were happening were not we're not kosher. We're not, we're not right. Yes. We're not, did, did not demonstrate any humanity. Mm-hmm. So um, in terms of languages and articulation and stuff, yeah. If a, if a child grew up with only one particular language in their surroundings, going to, for example, from one moment to the next, go to Europe and having to learn uh, a European language is extremely difficult. And definitely if you have, Romanic and Germanic languages, no? If Pacamento yeah. has so much Portuguese, Spanish, African, West African languages um, in it. Yeah. And if you then have to go and express yourself in touch, that has a lot of sounds all the way in the back of your throat. Yeah. And Or tongues that have to roll and exactly. make all sorts of strange <laughs> moves. You will have a lot of trouble. You will have. You will. You will. <laughs> we we have to move yeah. on because I, I, you know, otherwise this is going to be a three-hour program, Donna, and I know you have no time for that, and I don't think I have the energy. So oh. let's move on to when you got married to your 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 husband, to Lloyd. my sweetheart, my friend forever. <laughs> yeah, 1983. When and, did you meet? Uh, where, 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 when school, and where did you meet? School, at, at school, at school, at uh, the Peter Stuyvesant. Thank God it's not called that anymore. It's uh-huh. now called, uh, um, uh, uh, it, it now has a name of a Curacaoan person with very high standing. Colegio, Col- Colegio Alejandro Paula, it's called now. But in those days, it was called Peter Stuyvesant College. That's where I met it. And Stuyvesant was one of the uh, early people moving from the Netherlands to the colonies. So that's why uh, we Correct. Should... And oh. from the colony, not only came to Curacao and was governor here, but also went to New York and was governor yes. in New York. Yes. Right, right, right. Uh, oh, here is, uh, here is, here, here, here he is, Lloyd. <laughs> Hello, Lloyd. Saying Papiamento is very similar to the Creole language. Correct. Cabo it Verde. is. Yes. Cabo yes. Verde, correct. Right. We met a lot of people from Cabo Verde. For Uh example, during our our college time, because after we married, we went to the United States. We went to Tucson, Arizona, and there we met with people from Cabo Verde. And they heard us speak Papiamento and they could understand everything. That was so funny. And they started inviting us to everything. Oh, because if they spoke, yeah, if they spoke their Criollo and we spoke Papiamento, we could communicate with one another. You know, when I, when I was in, when I was in Curacao recently, I, I speak Portuguese and I speak a little Spanish, and I could yes. just make my way there. So understand everything. everything. So yeah, Lloyd yeah, here, yeah. he he he. Um, oh, this is the son. This is uh, yeah. This is, that yes. is our son. That is it's Lloyd son, Andrew. Lloyd. Yes. Hello, yes. Lloyd Andrew. Very nice meeting you. Uh, well, I'm not yes. meeting you, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but but Lo- Lloyd, the father. Yeah. Um, and you, you did quite some traveling, which unfortunately we don't have time for today. But I know you lived in the United States. Correct. While he was uh, finishing his studies. And you did a whole heap of things in, in, in that time, which unfortunately True. we have no time for. But it's <laughs> about the same time when this is totally out of left field. Mm-hmm. You, you won the song festival. Tell yes. us about that. Yes, um, in 1983, that was just a couple of months before we got married, um, I won a song festival with a beautiful song of Irene Cara, who just passed away not too long ago. She did, yes. On Your Own was that oh, song. We and do um, when we got married, and because we just got married, when we were on the flight, and also when we got to Puerto Rico, they gave us the, the, um, a suite. The marriage suite. That was so funny. <laughs> that was so nice. It was a very nice experience. 
And here we are um, going to the event to uh, to give the show. So this Puerto is in Puerto Rico, Rico the, 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 yes. the picture with you coming off the bus. Yeah. Yes. That is, so uh, where, where else did you travel to as a singer? Uh, um, different islands in the Caribbean, Venezuela, um, uh, but different islands in the Caribbean and Venezuela. And right. also Argentina, uh, Argentina uh, with, with some other um, cultural groups to yeah. represent Curacao during a um, tourist uh, exchange of cultures, touristic exchange of cultures. So it brought me a lot of different places in the world. Well, I know you're a great singer because I witnessed that when I was there. There was a party that we both attended and there you were singing, wearing this. This is not a pictures of that night, though. Yes. But we can see on these pictures that here you are, you're a diva, you're a star, you're a singer. you got a beautiful voice and we will be enjoying some of that way at the end of this program. Okay, uh, I will I will show a tiny clip that you sent me and uh, which will be big proof of the fact that you are a wonderful singer. Thank but you. as I was saying, we have only limited time and I really need to talk to you about the other stuff. So, yes, this is what's going to go on in just a couple of minutes because we have now reached a part of the program, Donna, that most of my guests really, really dread. It has a name. It is called On The Spot. Five quick questions to... <laughs> On The Spot, five quick questions to Donate Filbert Niefeld. The okay. rules are... I give you the answers. I give you two answers per question, five questions in total. You're not allowed to elaborate, Donna. You have to choose one of the two answers I give you. And at the okay. end of the round, I, depending on the time, I will let you elaborate on one or maybe two of those questions. Okay? Okay, well, let's try it out. <laughs> let's try it. It's going to be murder, as it usually is. My friends really don't like this. Here we go. Question number one. We have established mm -hmm. that you've traveled quite a lot in the Caribbean, South America, United States, and even the Netherlands. Do you feel more Caribbean or more Global North? I choose Caribbean. Good. All right. Question number two. What is more important to you? Music or your research? Right now, my research. Mm, okay. Number three. Western countries and uh, Western countries and oppression go hand in hand. Yes or no? Yes. Question number four: It is time for black people to free themselves. Yes or no? Absolutely, from mental slavery. Ah, there you go. And the last question: What is the one thing, Donna, that you would never, ever, ever, ever? do again work in government work in government you're never going to do that again <laughs> we're going to get to your work in government but we'll keep it short <laughs> so which of these questions would you like to elaborate on we got caribbean or global north music or research oppression and western lands uh, countries go hand in hand black people need to free themselves which one do you wish to elaborate on? I think black people need to free themselves from mental slavery. All right, yeah. shoot. What is it you need to say about that? They need so much information. They need to open themselves up. They need to stimulate their children to learn more about the true history. Why? Because we are bondage, thinking that we are nothing, that we don't have any worth. We do not make use of this power, this strength, this love, this energy we have in ourselves to build our own communities, build our own businesses, support one another. We have taken over the whole idea of divide and conquer. And so we put, we, we, we do not assist each other to make it, you know? Donna, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a step further. We even divide and conquer ourselves. Let me. That's give you what I mean. Take it over. Yes. 
Let me give you a very recent example. I was doing the promotion for this program and I got not one, but two people who, whom I've known for years asking me, I never knew you were so interested in the history of slavery. And I'm, I'm think, I've heard that so many times and I'm thinking the only reason they're asking me is first of all, I'm not very dark colored. And second of all, I made a place for myself in a white society. And mm -hmm. apparently to many black people, that means I don't care about that history. Mm -hmm. I am one of those people who crossed over to the white world. Mm -hmm. And am I right in, 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 in coming up with that explanation? Yes, yes, it's true. We are, we are, we experience this whole colorism thing. Mm -hmm. But the point is, it is not being black, white, or everything in between. It's being the best that you can be. And in whatever society you can be that. Right. So and it so starts it, with your self-esteem. Right. So that's when we're talking about black people freeing themselves. It's all about self-esteem. So where, yes. where I, I know I have it, and you apparently have it too. Mm -hmm. Where can those people who are, you know... Um, having trouble with that, where can they go and find some self-esteem? I mean, we can't buy it from the shelves in, the, in, 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 in a shop. To tell you the truth, I find that there is a lot of material on social media. You are an example of that yourself. Mm -hmm. you're, you're making material that is uplifting to people, all kinds of people in all sectors. Parents need to really pay attention to what their children are busy with and to expose them to positive examples of our people, our ancestors, and whatever they did in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would make a big difference in building up that, 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 that self-esteem of us and to yeah. make them aware that you can, you can do it. You can do it on your own. You so, don't what, need so, to what the, so what if the parents themselves have not found out that these things are possible. The parents themselves are still very much a part of what Donna Mattis, my friend in Jamaica, is saying, and you mentioned it earlier, the mental slavery. Bob Marley sang about mental slavery. Correct. Donna Correct. says, beginning with Christianity, the most formidable Correct. enslaver. Shoot. Correct. That is totally the case. Um, going through the initial readings and um, experiencing it, in my own family, um, we have been um, in Curacao, for example, Catholicism, Roman Catholicism, and in Suriname, the uh, Moravian Church, were actually the ones who were uh, that the 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 Protestant Church, you could say, outsourced the um, the conversion. To. What conversion? What and do you mean? What I mean with conversion is to totally get rid of our original indigenous and tribal um, spiritual systems, mm -hmm. really connected to nature and to love and to and to life, and um, be instructed. You could say to um, believe in a in in in. Deities, you could say that you don't even feel a direct connection with a white, blonde haired, blue eyed Jesus, for example. Right. Um, and with the sole intention of keeping you as calm as possible, keeping you in a mental state that you would find it acceptable to be to be dominated and to have your body and your soul and your mind be dominated by others. So that is basically what was done. This was done after the abolition of slavery. How can you explain, because this is the one thing that really troubles me, Donna. How can you explain that so many people in the former colonies are still so much geared toward that same church that, that oppressed them? That, that took away their, their, their being, just what you're saying, that took away everything that they, who they are and, 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 and put in place some acceptable form of lower life uh, compared to the white people, but acceptable because they went to church. Why is it that these freed people, freed, why is it that they 
are still so very much invested in that church. Can you explain? The engineering of the system mm -hmm. was done on such a profound level, on every level, from baby to elderly, that everything that was their own, everything that was that had to do with their own orishas, with their own spiritual system, with their own healing system, was considered heathen, was considered mm -hmm. bad, was considered wrong. And so much attention was given to punishment. If you dedicated any time to your own belief systems and you were you were you were gifted you 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 were put on a pedestal when you followed those rules and regulations of forgetting your yourself mm -hmm. and following the systems of christianity mm -hmm. that it's ingrained in our dna right now people in general need to hold on to something and that something for them is the church mm -hmm. yes so as a researcher i i constantly see that and i respect that because everyone is in charge of their own development And I, and I truly hope mm -hmm. that with the little piece that I will add in this, in this knowledge base, mm -hmm. in this body of knowledge, that that will have an opportunity to go into the schools, go yeah. into the learning systems, so that people can be aware that That what they are that what they are searching for is actually already in them. Exactly. And, and that and God's the, source is already in you. Yes. And so believing in yourself, vibrating in a positive manner, mm -hmm. going out and doing good is just as good as being in church every every day. It's even better because you do it you know? out of your own. DJ Conscious I, asks a very I, yes, sorry. DJ asks a very uh, interesting question. He says, "Without the church or religion, would mental slavery still be an issue today?" That's an interesting question. Yes, because as long as every other uh, means of influencing, which me, which starts with the curriculum in schools, with the 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 movies you're looking at, with the mm -hmm. books you're reading, as long as they don't change. And the image of our people, whether it be people of African descent or indigenous people, mm -hmm. as long as that image of everything that is not necessarily Western is being seen as less than, yes, it will remain. So it's not, it's very complex. Mm -hmm. And we need to be aware that it's on all those different levels, these changes need to come. Even in our language, your oh, daily definitely. language is used. People say, you know, language is almost like a, you put a spell on people, huh? Uh -huh. And it's true. You keep talking about the dark sheep, the black sheep, the black this, the black that, in a negative way, it does something to you. And that's why they recently did another study in Holland where they checked little black girls with our little girls from African descent and they gave them different dolls and it was exactly the same response as years ago you know that the, that, that, the, took the, the white doll yes they do they do and it's even last night there was a wonderful documentary here on Dutch television about dolls and there was this little cute little black girl and all she wanted was long blonde hair and she didn't like her skin color and she wanted white dolls and it's 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 infuriating and it's also very very depressing to see how this 
it's intergenerational, isn't it? It just yes, keeps going on and on. Almost in our DNA, but it's also every day in everything that this little girl sees from yeah. the first book she gets in school of all the little pictures in her classroom from all the billboards that she passes when she's in the train in the bus on the bike wherever she's at she sees this beautiful people who do not look like her who do not sound like her and yeah. so she starts developing this impression that she's wordless, you yeah. know? So and there's it's, it's so still, much it work It works on both ways because in this very recent, this documentary that was, you know, it's very recently made, you mm -hmm. still find the little white children. And I, I, I would have wished that this was gone by now. You still find the little white children asking this black girl, how did you get your color? Can I touch your hair? You know, that's the, the same thing you and I went through when we were small and because- All the time. All, all the, the time. time. It, it, it yes. will never end. It will never, yes. well, maybe it will end. Uh, Elsa is saying yeah. it's heartbreaking research. Yes, I can understand. DJ is. Conscious is calling it brainwashing, which is exactly what it is. And Donna Mattis has a question on the continuity of history. The past is completely separated from the present and history uh, is not seen as a whole, but in parts and systems and institutions. Mm -hmm. That's a very astute remark, Donna. I, I, mm -hmm. I believe you are right. Uh, Donata, we, we're going to make a little, little sidestep here because, like I was saying, you're so multi-talented. I have to talk to you about other stuff that you've done in your life, but we'll do it very quickly. I know okay. you work for uh, government in Curacao. Yes. Just yes. very quickly, what is it you did for those people then? Because you say you don't want to work for them anymore. So No, no, no. I. Why do I say that? Because I have done the best that I could yeah. for the people the people of Curacao and those other people that I worked for, because I also worked for the government in St. Martin and in, um, and in Bonaire. Right. So I put everything in there and I feel that there's now space and place for others to take over. Because so what, 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 what is it what you were doing for them? I believe um, it was related worked, to the speech, wasn't it? The, yeah, the first part was related to um, uh, the Department of Social Work, and um, later it became it became the Ministry of Social Development, Labor, and Welfare. And right. for the last twelve years, I was Director of Labor. So, Where are you in now? The, yes, yes, yes. So, so and what, so. What? Mm -hmm. I, I worked mostly in government. I worked first as a speech therapist for a number of years. And when I came back into the government, I did management work and um, the last 12 year director, uh, as a director in labor. And why, why is it you, you're telling me you, you, you're not going to ever, 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 ever do that again? <laughs> because, um, first of all, I find that when you, you you have such a long period in a particular area and you close the door, open new doors, open ah. other doors. Okay. okay? You just, you so just that's wanted how to give yourself it. right. You just want to give yourself more more uh, options in life. Yes. Uh, another another quick picture that's uh, you with your husband and your son. Uh, in Trinidad and Tobago. At Christmas time. We we yes. need to cut down. We need to cut down on the Christmas thing as well. <laughs> we, we, we colonize the the, fest, the 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 annual festivities, and 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 I see you traveling. Uh, that's that's all this government work that, In, that we do, yes, right? um, to to Switzerland, to to um, to the United Nations in New York, and um, that was almost an annual activity where yeah. you're um, coming together um, and meeting people from all over the world going back to your country and doing your utmost to implement certain aspects, especially when it comes to labor, you know, um, preventing um, actually um, misuse of foreigners, for example, uh, in mm -hmm. our systems here in Curacao, mm -hmm. um, which it happens, it happens in different places, preventing that um working with um different organizations to make um the situation in the workplace better yeah. for for workers so and of course also um working on 
organizing all sorts of projects and programs to improve the skill sets of people so that they can find and hold on to a job or yeah. I always preferred, I always prefer that, give them the skills that they can start their own micro or small business and be on their own feet. We depend too much on government. That's okay. my impression. Well, it's good that you mentioned this, and I'm only going to shortly linger on this, but Donna, when I was there in Curaçao, the thing that really, really irritated me is that every single hotel and restaurant on the island that I visited was Dutch-owned. White yes. people from the Netherlands who sold up their little shop here, like their shoe shop, and, and moved over to Curaçao for the weather, start their own uh, restaurant or their or their hotel. And when you talk to them about it, they say, yeah, but, you know, we, we, we're creating jobs here. But then I look who does the work, and it was interns from the Netherlands doing the work. So it's double oppression. No yeah. Curacao people working in the hotels, except for, you know, the ones cleaning your, your, your toilet for you. Mm -hmm. and, and the Dutch interns, you know, they're, they're cheap labor as well. Mm -hmm. What's up with the Dutch people? You tell me that. You know, Dutch people have always done that all over the world. And that is create a infrastructure in which they can function. And they call that to work on an verdien model so that you can, you can make money. Yeah. Um, of course, if you look at the locals, we didn't have that nest egg to start with. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's start there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when we do gather it one way or another, maybe you get some lottery winnings or whatever, and you start, not necessarily is there a infrastructure that you can function in to build it up. Right. So I must tell you, that's definitely one area that before I'm not here anymore and I'm an ancestor, that I would see more of our local people having created their own infrastructure because it's up to us we well, need to create that infrastructure there need there need for that to happen there needs to be some kind of you know buildings left that they can start their own hotel because the dutch people there they, they they're taking all the historical buildings and yes they're doing a good job at, at, at uh what you call it them um what's the word um, restoring those buildings restoring them i mean um, stuff, livable but, and workable buildings yes yes they do yes. a great job at that, but there's not going to be any buildings left for local people to start their own restaurant or their own hotel if this goes on the way it does. Yeah. Enough of that because I could talk an hour with you about this. Yes, Another right. sidestep you did, which was, I thought that was so much fun. You became a model. At what age did you become a model? 62. <laughs> How did that you know, happen? Oh, um, first of all, in a particular period of my life, um, you know, with a lot of stress of work and stuff like that, I put on, I packed on pounds and pounds oh, and pounds. Don't we all? We all do. And, and, in, 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 and at the particular time, I said, you know, no, now we're going to work on cleansing the body, the mind and the soul, Good for you. which meant loosening myself up from negative things and negative environments and less less pleasant people let's call it that and then moving into healthier foods and exercise and i must say that lloyd george my husband did a lot of that stimulating me in that manner Really, he, he, yes. he is into that aspect of, of health and uh, natural products, um, uh, herbs and, and, and vegetables and all of those type of things. And so it really made a difference. I started listening at him mm -hmm. and my sister, who was always into the modeling part. And, um, but it was not for the modeling. It was for getting healthier, yeah. getting in a better state of body, mind and soul. And mm -hmm. in one of those whimsical moments, there was a, 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 a company, Peña company here in Curaçao, and they started with a project of um, different people in the community who 
had inner beauty. Well, there and you go. They wanted they wanted us to record a video. I did it. I thought ah nothing's gonna come out of it. I <laughs> couldn't believe that I became their ambassador for a year. Or so that was really fun. That was really but, fun. But and look 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 at you on these pictures. I mean, I see a fabulous diva there. Totally can't at help peace with herself. <laughs> What, sorry, what did you say? I said I can't help myself. Once the lights are on, the showgirl <laughs> comes up. I know. Once I know. the lights are off, the <laughs> nerd comes in. So I Ooh. have this real difference. We can in, shake in hands on that. We yes. can shake hands on that. I even talk about yes, my face. I'm a nerd. I can't help myself. So that's why I love research. Same here. I even call my face the, the television face. I call it the visage. As if it doesn't belong to me. I actually Correct. paint it on like I did today. Correct. And when I'm just my little nobody at home, you wouldn't even recognize me. So I'm that's just funny. a nerd. I love the books. I love to learn. I love to investigate. But in but if I get the opportunity and the lights are on, I'll take the mic and run. <laughs> sure. I've yeah. seen that happen. Okay. Yes. So much for the uh, little sidesteps there. We're going to go back to business to when you and I met. Uh, like I was saying, uh, in May of this year, and this was the day I interviewed you. We saw a clip of that earlier on the program. Yes. Uh, the interview took place in a wonderful museum uh, in Otrabanda. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. what, what's it called? Kura, Kura, Kura Ulanda. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ulanda, the basically Dutch uh, yard. The Dutch yard, yes. Very painful, though, because you know what happened in that yard. Tell us. The Dutch yard was the place where the slaves were, you know, presented for the buyers to It was the market, them. the slave market. It was the marketplace. It was the slave mm -hmm. marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, of the, the Caribbean, the Dutch Caribbean islands, um, Sint Justatius, where you also went, and Curaçao were major uh, slave depot so yes. that's where you came you were um you, you were um checked whether you were healthy or not if you needed to strengthen they would give you what you needed to strengthen and then they would display you and when we talk about display they didn't care whether it was a family unit or what you were sold and so people were sold to various South American, other Caribbean, and also to the Americas. So families yes, were from... divided. Daddy used to go, went to that island. Mommy went to that country in the South America. Correct. Children were somewhere else. That's what yes. they did. They separated yes. families. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And that happened in that location, you're telling me, where, where I interviewed you. What, what yes, is now because what, what you see now is not mm -hmm. what it was like. Mm -hmm. So that area of Kurahulana where we were at, right behind it was the sea. Mm -hmm. So ships came past there and delivered the enslaved. So it was totally different organized at the time. Yeah. What you now see, the streets and everything were not there. It was all water. It was just yeah. water, yeah. Yes. Well, what, what I did after I interviewed you, I, I visited the rest of the museum and I went mm -hmm. into the cellar, yes. which is where they rebuilt a slave ship. And oh. I, I, I filmed there, Donna. Let's have a look at what I, what I saw there. Mm -hmm. In the hold of a slave ship, the enslaved were as many of us know, carried by the hundreds, packed together like sardines, with no space to live in an area that was only three inches in height, three feet and three inches in height, packed together, tied hands and feet, and put inside the hold of the ship where the kegs were kept and the enslaved tied together back together in this horribly small area 
Chains for their feet. Chains on their hands. Bunched up together. For weeks on end. Sitting in their own excrements. People dying. Corpses left behind. This is how they were taken from Western Africa across the Atlantic Ocean where they were put to work with no pay, daily whippings and everything else that hopefully enters your history books properly at some point in time. Well, you yeah. can hear by my voice that it it, it 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 was quite an experience to be there and it was you know it was a replica but just being there and remember there's a light on there there was no light on the ships it was pitch dark mm -hmm. um you know what donna it's very hard to put into words what it is you feel and think when you're experiencing something like that which is probably why you started doing your research correct Ah. Where do we go from here in this conversation? What, we, I promised people we would be talking about the experience of being enslaved. Mm -hmm. what, what is it you've, you've found so far? That we think or the way we were taught about the spirit, if we were taught anything about the spirit, is that they were people who just accepted it. Mm -hmm. That there were people who just laid their head down low and did everything that they were supposed, were oppressed to do. Mm -hmm. Through the aspects of oral history, and not only in Curaçao, when you, when you're, when you, are doing this you have to actually get your data from different sources and combine them to get a picture because what is written about this history by the dutch for example is from a white male perspective white male white perspective. male perspective who were the slave owners or the, um, those who were in business of buying and selling, etc. from their perspective. Also, when the, the pastors, the, the Catholic pastors or the Protestant reference domines wrote, they wrote from their perspective. Okay? Mm -hmm. There is not much but there are there are written documents that describe the resilience the agency so how our ancestors our enslaved ancestors responded or reacted to certain things you might not find it in the in the reports of the 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 pastors and the reverends and the owners but you will mm -hmm. find it in other documents um uh when a person is manumitted or when uh manumitted being when, freed from slavery yeah before the official date of slavery mm -hmm. okay or when a person um how would you say that when a person uh revolted against something you will find it in the in the judicial papers for mm -hmm. example mm -hmm. how the person responded look at for example what happened most recently when the king 
um, actually exonerated Tula from being a person who was bad, who was um, uh, causing a lot of trouble. Yeah, and they Let had to, Tula. Tula was a freedom fighter in Curacao, who until very recently, it's a matter of weeks until very recently was regarded by the Dutch government as being, well, I guess a terrorist. That's what, I don't know if that, that's the word they used. Correct. But they have very recently, I think it's four weeks ago, um, rehabilitated him. Rehabilitated Tula, correct. But how can you, re even the word rehabilitation mm -hmm. has a connotation. It means you did a bad thing. We have let you become better. Exactly. Tula was a freedom fighter correct. using the methods and the philosophies of the French, liberté, Correct. fraternité, égalité. He Fraternité. and the guy in, 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 in uh, what's his name, Dessalines in Haiti are the ones who actually used the French Revolution to say, so what about us? Correct. Aren't we brothers and sisters? I Correct. interrupted you, please go on. No, but what you brought in was extremely important because in this case, what did they actually use to rehabilitate was a referent who was mm -hmm. sent out to try to calm them down and who made a report who was sent to the to, to, to the Netherlands. And in that report, he clearly says, he, he states what Tula said. Aren't we not humans? Aren't we not the same? If my brother or sister is being handled in a in, in an inhumane way, and I try to free them. How can you call that me being a terrorist or causing a revolution? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they found that data in a report of a referent who reported back to the officials in the Netherlands. And do you do you remember those? Yeah, mm -hmm. out of Sorry. that data, they they actually you hear the voice of this enslaved person. Exactly. You hear the voice of Tula. Do, do you do you by any chance uh, have the name of the reverend uh, right on the tip of your tongue? No, I, I don't. Right neither now. do I. I know I know we talked I don't about it. Right yes. Yes. But th this is yet again, because this is where we started. This is yet again the church, the Protestant church of the Netherlands. Correct. Butting its face into politics. Yes, um, actually, there was no separation eh, of there was no church separate. and state. That is what you and I have been taught in school, that there should be. Mm -hmm. In those days, maybe in the Netherlands or in Europe, on the mainland of Europe, mm -hmm. there was a so-called separation of state and church. In the colonies, state was church and church was state. Right. And I believe it was especially the case on the Dutch former colony islands. I believe it was it played larger roles on the islands than it did in Suriname. But maybe I'm wrong in, in, in that case. I'm I not cannot say sure. yet until no. I go to all until of you those finish your, your research. Well. Yes. Yes. Um, yes, yes. Donna Mattis is saying something here. The resistance to the slave trade is one distorted or um, what does that word say? Excoriated, Excoriated issue. issue. The whitewashed history makes Africans complicit and collaborative without giving historical context. That's true. That's, I've seen that. Mm -hmm. um, and she is the person is so right because the kind of enslavement that we had on the main on, on the continent of Africa was completely different. It was not one where you separated families or send them over the trans a transatlantic place and sold them and ill treated them to a point that they couldn't live anymore. This was a different kind of, of enslavement. And you yes. could, you by marriage or by your deeds that you did, you could um, uh, regain whatever it was that you, that you already had. So you cannot combine the two. It's, um, it's, you, it's, it's, you cannot it's compare different. the two. Right. Uh, Gerda says she believes it was Reverend Schink. Does that ring okay. a bell? Yes, yes. Thank you, Gerda. Yes. Thank you very yes. much for Thank being so. Thank you so much. Yes. Also a very good friend, old school friend of mine. I got, I got so many of your <laughs> friends watching today. I've got yes, to thank you for yes, that. So thank you, everybody. You're Welcome. Looking. Great. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I, I'm wondering yeah. I sh if I should put up the, the URL again. So if, if anybody wants to join the conversation. If you do, people, if you want to be on screen with Donna and myself, 
head over to this uh, URL. It's case sensitive. Um, allow your camera and mic to be used and enter your name and press enter studio and you'll be here in the orange room waiting for Donna and me to put you up. PTVL030. Yeah, <laughs> yes, Gerda, thank you very much. I can, so far nobody has joined this, the show, you know. They all like to sit behind their little laptops and, and, and send it's comments. It's safe, it's safe. It's, I understand. <laughs> not, not everybody yeah. is like you and me. We want to be divas all in the limelight all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah back so, to the topic. Back to the so topic. So basically, you cannot find out what people experienced until you combine several databases with one another. Mm -hmm. And there are certain people, for example, on our island, um, Pater Brenneker was one of them, um, Alice Juliana, and then following in their footsteps was Rosemary Ellen, Professor Dr. Rosemary Ellen, who are people who did a phenomenal job in giving um, descendants of the enslaved the opportunity to tell their story in the original manner and collected the songs, collected the tambu, which is a typical drumming style, drumming, yes, drumming and singing style, which was used to, to actually send out information to different places mm -hmm. the different drum styles would mean something mm -hmm. they collected the songs they collected the the, the music and the the foods the, what the, how the people prepared them they collected things like how people dressed up their hair um, um how they braided to indicate information so you braid your hair and people think ah oh, that's a nice uh Hairdo. A nice style. No, it indicates where you have to meet one another. It's a map. At which conjunction. Right. To escape, mm -hmm. you know. So um, there are so many aspects that um, you, you can combine to find out how people actually experienced it and to get strength because there are people who are angry and do not want to talk about that period because they said, yeah, but they were so weak. They just mm -hmm. accepted everything. No, they had ways of playing a certain way to be able to, to, to deal with the system in such a way so that things could be better in the future or for their children or or whatever so they were strong people who were in a horrible system but made it because otherwise you and i wouldn't be here well that's what i always say when people say yeah 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 yeah, your, your, your people were so weak they you know white people like to say that as well not only black mm -hmm. people say that white people mm -hmm. like to say that i always mm -hmm. tell them yeah no baby because it's because they were strong that i am here this oral, this oral history that's been um, collected by Rosemary Allen, mm -hmm. are you seeing any way for it to have the same importance, the same um, impact as the written history that you and I were taught in school? The white, well, the white written history that does not include any of this. Well, I must say that American people of color, mm -hmm. Caribbean people of color, Caribbean women have done a phenomenal job. People like, um, uh, what's his name again? Sir, Sir Hillary Sir. Beckles. People uh -huh. like Farine Shepherd um, and many others in where you've been in Jamaica, in Barbados, in all of these islands, people in Suriname, they are fighting and they are gaining strength in putting this in on the same level. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, it is the only way to give voice to the indigenous people and the people of African descent because it's the same systems. Mm -hmm. 
that kept us from writing, that kept us from writing our history, or that kept those who against all odds still learned how to write, to have their books being widespread so that our generations now can learn from them. So I must say that this is a unique period for our history. It's because, women you're telling me. It's women. Why yes. on why is it always women who stick out their necks? Who, We are who have this, 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 the, but they have this vision for the future. Is, life is it, givers. Is that is that the reason? Life givers, people who their their being, our being is a life giving one. We give life to the history. We give life to, and we fight for the continuance of our existence. Mm -hmm. So we fight for a better curriculum. We fight for the for however difficult it is, because I already experienced how difficult it is to try to to narrate the true history after going into archives that are not yet ordained. Do you know what it means to go through boxes of data mm -hmm. that has not yet been digitalized, mm. but in those boxes written by hand, It's part of the true history. And so more of us need to get that opportunity to dig in there, get the original data, yeah. then get that on a form like what you are doing right now, because truly writing is one, mm -hmm. but one way or another, our generations do not feel comfortable with reading mm -hmm. so by presenting it in bite-sized chunks in um programs in all the the new media media styles we will get the message across are, are, are you, are you, are, you are you confident that it will actually happen it is up to us you are already busy you are already doing something that a couple of years ago was not possible True. It's not easy, but no. your sister saw it. She did. You followed up. Look yeah. at you now. Mm -hmm. And one needs one thing le leads to the next. So that is definitely one form that I would love to bring this oral history to people. Not well, only in book form, but in a form that people in bite-sized chunks yeah. can share. Mm -hmm. with one another mm -hmm. and in that sharing built up their self-esteem ah, and so happy also you say that. bound mm -hmm. together with the funds yeah because we are spread all over but we need to bind our funds together to be able to make things happen oh and i so agree get our businesses and to get our restaurants and to get our hotels yeah okay and to change our school curriculum and to One thing I feel strongly about, I feel that the Caribbean women, regardless of where what island they are are living in, they should be working more together because I, as an out relative outsider, what I see happening is exactly what you're saying now. But I do believe that on the islands, women don't see the power they have. I mean, the you know, the women in the street, they don't see that they're actually already running whatever country they are in. They don't see that they are doing the thinking, the visionary part, the actual work. We need to go tell them, Nona. I'm going to well, call you and you're going to be part of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just need you just need to be. I think I, I believe in leading by example. Yeah. Um, I believe in doing, not yes. necessarily saying what you're going to be doing, but, but just go about it. and do it. And, right. and because people sometimes get 
try to break what you what you said you would do. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you start doing it um, and you're making a difference and it has an, an impact, yeah. I think that's the way to go. I think yeah. that's the way to go. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Boca TV Live is the exact example of that because when I was still working in the newsrooms in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. this was before internet, I used to say, there must be a way that you can make television all by yourself. And people used to laugh in my face. Well, who's teaching who now? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Evelyn absolutely. says, Evelyn Bruce says, Tamu he tamandamundu. <laughs> That's one of the songs of uh, what, does it, what, does, what does it mean? Tamanda it says oh, women it's rule the rule women the world. who rule the world. Yeah. Yes. Tamu heta manda mundu. Double Ere, one of our big uh, composers, made that oh, song. Oh, Double Ere. Oh, yes. Yeah, he's phenomenal. Yes, yeah, he's phenomenal. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh gosh, Donna! Look at the clock. We are we are reaching the end of the program. I could have gone up. Maybe maybe we'll do a part two sometime. Um, that would but be this, fun. It definitely would, but this is the uh, the time in the program where I tell my lovely viewers, all the new ones here as well, that my next episode of Poka TV Live, in which I'll have a totally different guest, will be on November the 24th at 6 p.m. Uh, Central European time. And my guest then will be the daughter of people, of somebody I grew up with. The daughter's name is Hadassa van der Jacht. She's a beautiful young woman. And instead of making tons of money as a model, which she easily could do, she took herself from the Netherlands back to Suriname, where her roots lie. And she now runs an ecological... Uh, resort? Uh, not a resort. No, she, 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 she actually, actually goes with her bare hands and takes people from the streets and tells them, come and help me. Let's clean up the city. Let's just move wow. all the plastic from the streets, from the river. Yes. And uh, she's a lovely, lovely young woman, and I'm, I'm I'm thrilled to bits that she will be my guest on November Fantastic. the 24th. Hadassa van der Yacht. Remember that name because someday she will be world president. I'm telling you. A few, <laughs> <laughs> a few quick, uh, quick uh, remarks. Oh, Evelyn mm -hmm. says yes, she would love to have a part two. And Thank I you, seem Evelyn. to remember that uh, DJ Conscious had some other um comments as well which i'm sorry dj are now totally uh irrelevant because we've covered it already but lovely 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 i need to uh i need to end with you now donna okay with you telling me oh donna donna mattis your namesake says it's a structured program thank you to you and donata thank you donna for watching always appreciate thank when you. you do so donata because we have donna and we have donata um mm -hmm. These two lovely pictures of you, I had no reason to put them up except that they're so lovely. And I'm just going to use them to ask you what your immediate plans for the near and middle future are. What What is it you'll be doing the coming days, the coming weeks, months? Well, right now I am in a very tough initiate graduate course. It's a prerequisite mm -hmm. in order to get your, um, your proposal um, evaluated and to um, be registered as a promovenda. So um, that is right now on my list. And then I'm going to do what I did on the left picture, which is hold a vacation even, I don't know how, how, how long it will be, but to have a vacation, be on the water, be on a boat. I was having a ball that day. We can tell, trust me. <laughs> I yeah. was having a ball on that boat. And um, then the, the one on the right, by the way, is one of um, the pictures in the office uh, yeah. as director of labor. I have the logo on of the government there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, that, 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 is, that is done. And um, I, uh, yeah, I truly enjoy the time. I enjoy the time and now others will take over. And then I'm going to work very hard on um, getting the research done, writing the book, and hopefully I can go around, go around the Caribbean, go around our um, islands, either those that are Dutch speaking or the, the, the English speaking ones, South America, America. And Indonesia. 
Yes, Jakarta was because on the, the Dutch were there as well. Yes, Jakarta is actually also on the map. Mm -hmm. Jakarta is on the map, and um, then share and especially empower because there are certain there are really some things that need to be worked on. First, the truth needs to be presented. But next to the truth, we need to, in one way or another, get to reconciliation. Mm -hmm. We need to get to some form of healing, also within ourselves, eh? mm -hmm. as people of color. And Prim primarily people. within ourselves. Primarily. Healing within ourselves. Yes. And then, whether people like it or not, we need to get to some form of compensation. We need to get to that part. People do not want to hear it. No, but, but you know what? I don't care what people mm -hmm. want to hear because mm -hmm. I myself did visit archives, Curacao, yes. Suriname, and all they are is, you know, records of money. So if Correct. that money thing could have got, could go on for centuries on end, there mm -hmm. must be a way that some of it comes back into our communities where we had no land, where we had no education, we had no house, we had no rights, we had no nothing. That is the capital that needs to be... Correct. What's we, have, we will started. really have achieved something mm -hmm. if within these islands that all form part of the mainland and the countries mm -hmm. where we, they were, there is equality. Yeah. Not that right now in Curaçao, a person is dying from the heat, but doesn't even have an oscillator, doesn't have a fan mm -hmm. to keep cool, mm -hmm. doesn't have food on the table. Okay. And people that are educated, but, and work, but don't have a living wage. That is unacceptable. It is. That is es unacceptable. Especially is if a country like the Netherlands you know, they've said sorry for slavery now. The king has said sorry. They, they, they are now, this is the year of, of, of commemoration. So everybody is very positive about all the things that need to be done. I am not seeing anything happening so far for just that. For, mm -hmm. you know, for, for the rebalancing. Rebalance, We're only talking about lovely little projects that we want to go do in, in, in sunny places where Dutch people are going to make money and maybe two or three local people will 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 have a job i'm not seeing anything happening where this equality thing is actually working out so people when we talk about compensation people think like i'm going to give you money no, no i don't need the money people don't need money mm -mm. people need the systems to be in place there you go you need to have a house with a roof that doesn't leak when there's a tiny little bit of rain Mm -hmm. You need to have streets that don't flood, that don't, my street mm -hmm. with a little bit of rain becomes a, a place where you can go, you, you can go from point A all the way to the end of this place in a boat. Right. That's how it fills with water because a, a car can't pass. Exactly. So yeah, um, as long as we have those conditions that our infrastructure is in horrible state or streets are in horrible state. Um, schools are are ovens. Kids cannot concentrate because it's so hot. Mm -hmm. um, people don't have the most basic of of that they need for their right. health and for their development. Don't, you don't need to give me money. Make sure that that is in place. And just That's to be going just for. to be very precise about this, just so that any person in Europe watching this ever does not say. You are in that situation because you are lazy, you are you're African, you are you, black people don't work because that is what they still think. We did everything, we built everything. We everywhere. are here despite all of that. So no, no, that no, means... not only that, we built everything. They never we... built anything. They they were the people who watched whether we while we worked. Yes, and whipped us. Don't talk the... to me about laziness. Mm -hmm. Everything that you see around you was is made by us, our people. Yes. Even the bloody White House in, in, in Washington was made by black Everywhere. people. Everywhere. So, okay. It's made by people of color, indigenous people. It's made by us. Last we thing. Work. We did. Last thing. I need to talk to you about education. Once yes. we get the reparations going and, and, you know, there's a flow of 
some sort of, of finance to 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 right all the wrongs uh, of the of the last couple of centuries. Once all that has happened, what is the curriculum going to be like? What is it that you see needs to be done education-wise in the Caribbean? Because right now, to be honest, um, Caribbean schools are raising children, are educating children to be service people, to work in hotels, to work in, in I don't know, dirty jobs. What does what do those countries need education-wise to uplift themselves and move forward truly independently? They need to produce what they use. Countries that that have the kind of um, education and formation where we can produce whatever it is that we use are countries where people on every level can get a position, mm -hmm. but not only that, stimulate and create systems and train children from the start mm -hmm. to be able to make money with the skills they have. Mm -hmm. Every person has skills. Mm -hmm. If the schools become a nest egg of the skill set that you have mm -hmm. and will support you to become the utmost in it, Mm -hmm. then we are a long ways. Look, one of the, the, the listeners and watchers indicated something about Christianity and, and, and schools. The church. Yes. That, mm -hmm. And church and the schools the churches brought had one goal. Teach you to be obedient. Mm -hmm. Teach you to accept a low-level job. Mm -hmm. teach you to not, um, how would you say, be criticized, mm -hmm. whoever has the company or the job, just do your job and keep it at that. Yeah. And then they will pay you what happens in Curacao, for example, a minimum wage from the day you start at 18 till when you leave the at day 65. You die. Yeah. Yeah. That is what those schools were for. Exactly. Keep you calm, tranquil, and don't fight, don't, don't, the ones that, that asked a lot of questions were kept from doing that because mm -hmm. they were a problem in class. Well, you yeah. need those types to be the leaders. Well, you were one and owners. I was one. Yeah. I know that for a fact, yeah. but th that's exactly why I'm asking you. So curriculum wise, what, what are we going to teach the next generations? You're telling me skills as, as to our history. What, what, what should we be teaching them on our history, where we really come from, what our people mm -hmm. are truly really like, what our spiritual systems and our connection with nature is truly because we didn't cause the problems that are right now with, 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 um, everybody's talking about, um, how you call that? Um, the environment. Yeah. 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 The, Our yeah. people were known to not overuse nature. Exactly. We use just what was what necessary yes. for our subsistence mm -hmm. and we kept the rest. We didn't build all of these industries that cost all sorts of um, problems with the air and with the with water global and the land, so-called yes. warming, because mm -hmm. we are getting other reports now. You know, mm -hmm. um, no, we we are a people, whether it's from African descent, indigenous people around the world. We live in harmony with nature, and Thank so you. be proud of that. Be be yes. be proud of that connection with nature and life, respect it. Cultivate your own food. Every household should have their own little garden with their own little herbs that are perfect to your body. You don't need the chemical medicines. In your yard, you have a tree that will lower your blood pressure, lower your sugar 
uh, blood sugar level in your yard. It's it's right it's around all there. you. And that's the good thing about those climates where all this happened. Things grow. You put a thing in the ground and it will grow. Yes. yes. Even in Europe, it grows depending the time of the year. Mm. But you need to give, you need to give, you need to respect that. Yeah. You yeah. should not see that as low life, as, mm -mm. as, as dumb, as, mm. you know, and see the spirituality as something hidden and, and wrong. Yeah. Embrace it. Embrace it. Wonderful. Be, mm -hmm. Yeah. Be, be, yeah. be the godlike person you can be and <sighs> love the people around you. Love the, love the universe, love the animals, love the, the environment, love the people around you. Wonderfully said, Donna. And uh, uh, we're going to have to leave it at that. But, but I'm sure this this is only a part one of what we we are doing. Because like I said, I have my little plans in the Caribbean. You are going to be right in the middle of that. But we need to do more talking. We can, we okay. can choose subjects and, and, you know, focus on those like education or housing or something. We can continue this conversation. Yes. Uh, what I would like to end with, I promised it way at the beginning of the program. Uh, we showed you as a lovely singer. Let me put up that picture again of you being a really gorgeous singer. Is it this one? I think it is. Yes. Here you go. We can see you're a lovely singer. And you send me a clip of the song, My Funny Valentine. And that yes. to me is very special. And I'll tell you why. Really? My sister, my sister Aisha whom yes. I dedicate this program to, yes. she was a singer too. And she oh. did a lovely recording of My Funny Valentine. Oh, so she, um, she did. And uh, I, I'm, I'm thrilled to bits that you send me that. So that is how I'm going to play out this program. I, I want to thank you so much for your time, your energy, your, your wisdom, your research, uh, for being so eloquent about it all. Uh, it was wonderful talking to you, Donata Filbert. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you. much. I am going to uh, remove you from the studio. Remember to okay. stay in the orange room until I, I will. finish this program. Thank you so much again. You're welcome. So that was my lovely friend, Donate Filbert Nieveld, uh, currently in Curacao. We have so much more to talk about, as you've noticed. Uh, time, uh, quick, 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 quick. Gerda says, uh, her friend says, she's very proud of you, Donate. And Els says, uh, it's time for her to go to bed. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank every viewer who, who stuck with the program today for being here. I, I loved reading all your comments. There was no time to share them all. Um, but um, it, it's, it's just time to round up. So that's what we're going to do. We'll be back on November 24th with Hadassah van der Yacht. Until such time, be good, be kind, and take care of yourselves. Bye, everybody. Here is Donata and my funny Valentine. Bye. He's your bigger less than free. It's your mouth when we go open it to me. Are you smart? Don't change your for me not if you